To use the jig, adjust the jig bar to get the proper angle and run the jig along the bar to sharpen the tool. Hi folks, welcome back. We've got another guest video for you today. It's my dad again, and he's made another video for the Tormek and that style whetstone sharpening system. This one is a small tool jig for your small chisels and things like that. So uh, sit back, enjoy, and uh, let us know what you think. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jack. Welcome to my shop. This is the third in a series of videos where I'll be making jigs for my Wen whetstone sharpener. There's a link in the description below to the first two videos in the series, and we'll add links to all the other videos as they are uploaded. Here's the first prototype I made for this jig. I based it on photos of the uh, Tormek small tool jig, and it works fine, but after using it, I decided I really don't need something this complicated. This whole front piece really isn't necessary. If I could make it thicker and put a bolt through it there to hold it, I wouldn't need any of this part here. So then I made a second prototype, and that worked fine too. But it was too big, so I had to cut it. Once I cut it, I realized that there was no need to uh, put this piece in here, because I could turn the piece sideways. And that way, when I drilled the hole through, it would be going into uh, long grain and not end grain. And so we came down to this final piece. The bolt goes through the uh, long grain. There's no need for an inlay. Uh, it's, it's short enough here to clear the, the wheel on the grinder and uh, that's all there is to it. It's a very very simple jig and easy to make. This jig will work with small to medium sized carving chisels and gouges. It doesn't work on skewed chisels or knives. To make this jig you'll need two pieces of hardwood. You'll also need a 5 16 drill bit and a 3 8 inch tap. I've used my table saw, band saw, drill press and lathe but this could all be done with hand tools. Let's take a look at the jig. If you already made the gouge jig, you'll see that this jig is very similar to the tool holder part of the gouge jig. The jig has a triangular hole where the tool is held. And it's got a, uh, the top is threaded to take a 3 8 inch bolt that holds the tool in place. There's a link in the description for templates and drawings that you can use to make the jig. There are imperial and metric versions available. For this jig, I'll be using a piece of eucalyptus three quarters of an inch thick, two and a quarter inches wide, and two inches long. I'll also use a small piece of ash to fill in the axle slot that I'll be cutting. I've pasted the template on the face of the jig, and now I'll cut the axle slot using my table saw and crosscut sled. The plans say this is a one eighth inch slot. Most table saw blades leave about a one eighth inch curve. Use whatever blade you have. You're going to cut the filler piece to fit the slot anyway. Now I'll drill a three quarter inch hole to remove some of the waste and to give me more room to maneuver the bandsaw blade. I'll cut out the triangular shape, stopping the bandsaw to remove the waste pieces. I'll use a piece of scrap pine. I'll set my table saw fence to just over one eighth of an inch, cut a piece, and then adjust this fence and cut again and creep up on the final dimension. Once I have the fence of the table saw set, I'll cut the final piece in the hardwood. Then I'll glue it in the slot using regular wood glue, lining it up so that it's flush on the inside of the opening. Now I'll trim the piece on my bandsaw and then sand it flush. I'll drill a 5 16 hole in the center of the top of the jig. There's a template provided for this, but I just centered it in the top. I've chucked the 3 8 inch tap in my lathe to hold it steady and I'll thread the hole being careful to keep the piece perpendicular to the tap. To make the wood thread stronger, I'll run some thin CA glue in the threads. Don't use accelerator. Let the glue penetrate the wood as much as possible. When the glue is cured, 
Carefully run the tap through one more time to clean out any excess CA glue. Here's the finished jig after it's been sanded and finished. I put in a 2 inch long 3 8 inch bolt to hold the tool as it's being sharpened. To use the jig, adjust the jig bar to get the proper angle and run the jig along the bar to sharpen the tool. If you're sharpening a curved gouge, you can pivot the tool using the gouge shaft as the pivot point. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like the video and share it with your friends. Be sure to check out the other videos on the site and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss new videos. If you have questions or comments, feel free to post them below. Thank you.